Japanese art. It has a history of over 10,000 years. In this small island country, unique art forms have been developed in every era. That history lives on to this day. Hello, I'm Megumi Sasaki. I was born and raised in Japan, but I've lived in New York City for more than 20 years. I'm a documentary filmmaker and have made films about contemporary art. But right now, I'm so fascinated to learn more about Japanese art and its history of over 10,000 years. Art Time Traveler. In Japan, there is a traditional performance art called no gaku, which has a history of over 1,000 years. Many no gaku plays are about supernatural beings, like gods, demons, and spirits. That's why masks play a very important role. No masks are made in the simplest form possible and symbolize Japanese beauty. In this episode of Our Time Traveler, let's focus on the beauty of no masks. The performance art of no gaku or no is said to have originated in China before coming to Japan and taking on its own form. Commanding the no stage is the shite or main performer who tells a story to live instrumentation. Not always human. The shite is often a spirit or ghost. For that reason, the masks won't become important. In no, these are called omote. The omote embodies the Japanese essence of human emotions that are portrayed in the no performance and they continue to enchant modern audiences and artists today. I hear there is a work of art here that combines the 1,000 year traditions of no with the latest technology. I'm so thrilled to find out. Hello. Hello. Konnichiwa. Hello. Nice to meet you. This is Nobumichi Asai, a highly innovative digital film producer. In the summer of 2014, Mr. Asai presented a work titled Omote. With over one million views per day, the video drew worldwide attention. The title Omote, of course, comes from no. Various images are projected onto a moving female face, transforming her into different characters. To explain the system behind this project, the masks are created with computer graphics, which then go on to cover the face, similar to the setup in No. Here's how it works. The woman's face acts as a screen, and its position is detected through sensors. Then, using a projector, the digitized video is cast onto the face. This technology is called projection mapping, applied here to the human face.
when an image is projected onto the face, a different personality emerges, each created in advance with a computer. It's actually very similar to no performers changing masks. I found it really fascinating that you found a sort of like a cross point between the old tradition and the latest technology. Universal themes like our ability to find things beautiful or having pride in traditions live inside of us regardless of the emergence of technology. Those things don't change even if our methods of expression do. The no mask used in this high-tech work I wonder if it has an old but new essence of beauty that never gets outdated. The fusion of modern technology with traditional performance art. Even after 1,000 years, the no mask continues to inspire artists today. No, it's said to be the world's oldest performance art form that continues without interruption. It began in the late 14th century with father and son, Kan Ami and Zeami. Receiving the patronage of the shogun, they were able to refine No into the first class art we see today. Currently, there are five no schools. On stage, the main performer or shite wears a no mask or omote, each carefully preserved and passed down in the schools. Today, with art historian Yuji Mashita, I'm seeing a work titled Monster Nue. In the story, a monster is banished by a master archer for making the emperor ill. The monster later comes back as a ghost, expressing deep sorrow, unable to rest in peace. The main role of the monster Nue is played by the 20th headmaster of the Hosho School of No a distinguished school that began in the 15th century. The 20th headmaster is 28-year-old Kazuhusa Hosho. In this program, the mask is changed during the performance to express the terrifying Nue burning with rage. We are allowed special access today to film this moment when the mask is put on. Watching the performance up close, I realized something. Until now, I thought it was impossible for the expressions on the mask to change. But depending on the angle and how the light shines on the mask, I could clearly see the expressions changing and feel the wave of emotions. After the performance, we changed into traditional Japanese tabi socks to enter a special area. Yeah. 
This is the no stage where the performance was held. The young headmaster awaits us. It was an amazing, amazing performance. I truly enjoy it. Thank you. Nogaku is seen as dull at times because there isn't very much movement. People may think it's boring, but what we hope to do is condense various types of human drama on this empty wooden stage and depict a bigger world. Today, for example, we portrayed a dark river in an imaginary world. In this program, we're introducing the beauty of no masks. No has a long history, and the Hosho School especially is known for its valuable masks. Today, we are seeing some of their most cherished masks. This is Fushiki Zo. Women are now allowed, but in the past, no was performed only by men who wore masks to portray young women. A unique feature of Fushiki Zo is a small stain between the eyes from a knot in the wood. Because of this knot in the wood here, this fushikizo is actually called an unsuccessful work. Originally, in carving this woman's mask, called zo, the knot of the wood ended up right between the eyes. So this is not a perfect work, but when you look at real human faces, they're not spotless either. We have moles and little scratches that make up our identities and become beautiful. This little stain was thought to add to this mask's allure, making it... Another characteristic of this fushikiso is the many horizontal lines you see here, creating a striped pattern. This is called hakeme, which means brush marks. By leaving the brush marks, shadows are created. Oh, yes. The expression changes when you tip it just a little. The expression changes according to the light. It's said that no masks are expressionless, but that's done on purpose in order to create these expressions using light. I think I've just now understood how no masks change expressions. Depending on the angle of the mask, the expression really does change. I see how that works. Here's a female mask from another school. It said this mask was a depiction of the main actor's late wife. This mask also changes expressions depending on the angle and lighting. So what does ma no masks mean for no performers? No masks are seen as works of art by most, but I've worked with them since I was a child and think of them more as comrades, if you will. My relationship with them is to be as frank as possible, as if they're my friends. I visualize what kind of performance a certain mask wants me to perform, or I'll discuss how I'd like to perform his or her role. Before putting on the mask, the headmaster closes his eyes, as if to greet the mask. He says this allows the role he's playing to enter his body.
But these masks do sometimes betray me. Just like friends. Yes, I include that in my definition of friend. When I put it on, for example, it's seen differently from what I intended. I was curious if you sing differently when you wear masks, mm -hmm. because the sound, it, there's a very small um, openings mm -hmm. in the mask, so I wonder how you calculate mm -hmm. the way you sing when you wear masks. Mm -hmm. If you look at the chin area of the mask, you can see it's a bit hollow. This is so the voice can echo here and bounce back. We, of course, do our best too, but the no mask helps us. If we don't focus on hitting this area with our voices, the audience won't hear us. So mas masks are almost like instruments too. Mm. Yes, there are instrumental elements. They're made very logically. The works that people call Japanese art today differ conceptually from Western art. Hanging scrolls and folding screens, for example, are furnishings for room interiors. Like that, this too has a specific use. It's a part of real life. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. And has a real purpose of using them. Mm -hmm. That's right. In this 2014 exhibition, no masks are exhibited in a way that lets us see the back size. Because the front of the mask must be made according to tradition. Mask makers are said to have expressed their identities on the backs of the mask. In addition to aesthetic beauty, things like how the mask felt on the face when worn, to how the actor's voice echoed onto the stage were considered when crafting the mask. Even though the mask's outer appearance may look the same, the inner workings of each mask are unique and individualized. Today, there are only a few mask makers left with the skills to create masks for the stage. We visited the studio of one of them, Tatsuya Arai. The original no mask was perfected approximately 700 years ago, and from that point on, the tradition has been to duplicate it without changing its shape. But Mr. Alai says no matter how he tries to keep with tradition, shapes do inevitably change with the times. Even if I tried to duplicate the mask exactly, there will naturally be some differences. As hard as I try to keep them out, I can't escape my own tastes and aesthetic values, the little habits of mine that show up. Interestingly, when a modern age person makes the mask, the face looks modern too. It's often said, no masks are like sheet music, in that there are rules, but they can be altered on purpose, or arranged into something different and new. Things like that do happen. Accepting tradition while hoping to contribute in some way is Mr. Alai's challenge. Duplicating the mask isn't about making a copy, but finding the essence of the original. That process is meaningful. Nogaku was perfected in the age of Kanami and Zeami and has been passed down through several centuries. 
but performers and audiences change with the times. And with that comes the need for innovation. This is true even in the world of no, which is said not to stray from tradition. We've come to a suburb of Tokyo today. So, wh who are we meeting today? Well, there's a young no mask maker I've been paying very close attention to lately. Mm. Mm. Bido Yamaguchi, an artist with traditional no mask making techniques, who is infusing new energy into the art. The world is taking notice of Bido's mask works, which he started creating eight years ago. What do his works look like? Here is my Western painting series. It's the first series I made. <laughs> this is Mona Lisa. <laughs> Created in 2007, this Mona Lisa was inspired by Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece. Traditional no mask making techniques were applied in making this mask. Even the cracks in the paint have been finally recreated. This mask is based on a work by painter Modigliani, who was active in Paris in the early 20th century. The uniquely thin, long face has been recreated in three dimension. Madonna by Norwegian painter Edvard Munch also stoked Vido's creativity. The world's masterpieces have gathered before my very eyes. You almost feel like the warmth of uh, Mona Lisa's temperature here. Mm -hmm. Almost like feel her breath. Mm. It, this, uh, your masks look so real. Because no masks have such a long tradition, was there any pushback about trying something so new and unusual? Well, there are arguments for both sides. My own teacher encouraged me to keep trying interesting things. Of course, it's important to keep certain customs in mind. But other than that, to try new things. Just put everything you have into it, which I think I've done. Mona Lisa, I become Mona Lisa. It looks natural. <laughs> In addition to masks of Western paintings, Bido has recently turned his attention to Japanese ukiyo-e. So when you create masks, masks originated from the uh, flat paintings, how, what is the techniques that you have to use to make the, uh, something from the paintings to create the uh, three-dimensional masks? Um, it's mainly through imagining, yes, my imagination. I, of course, can't see the parts that people can't see. Take this Oni Sadabo, for example. The painting is drawn at this angle, and we can't see the other side. But the right and left sides of the face are the same for most people. So I imagined what this side would look like. So, yes, I'd say it was all imagination. The technique of Utsushi or duplicating past masks, and the desire as a modern artist to create something new 
are two important elements in Bido's works. But I think sometimes limitation really triggers creativity. Because as an artist, if you have 100% freedom, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's, you get kind of lost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think limitation is sometimes a good guideline, I think, to be creative. Mm -hmm. I start from the standpoint of a no mask maker. And from there, I think about besides Utsushi, as well as what may have existed in the past. At the core is the traditional no mask. I don't see it as being restricted, but rather as having a foundation that has helped me formulate my style in expressing subtle beauty and utilizing the utsushi philosophy. For me, that might be a more accurate way to describe it. Where there are no restrictions, it's difficult for new expressions to be born. Whether they are technical or societal restrictions, great things are born because artists work hard within those various restrictions to find something new. I don't think it's a negative thing at all. Bido's new take on no masks moves us because of his solid background in traditional mask making. The no tradition has been constructed and passed on over several centuries and sometimes can be a burden to younger generations. But living within great tradition while having the passion to innovate in modern times is essential. Tradition and innovation. A miraculous blend of the two can keep the no mask alive for many generations to enjoy. No mask is backed by a long history and tradition. It's very old, but it didn't feel that way at all. Maybe that's because it's continuously altered to fit the times. I was so excited to find the limitations of tradition. I should push artists to keep on creating. So what art will we find next? I hope you join us again. <laughs>